Let's work a little bit now with our energy eigenvalue equation now that we've learned a little bit more about our operators. So we've said that our Hamiltonian in the position uh, representation is our momentum operator squared over 2m plus the potential energy as a, a function of position. So if we want to learn something about these energy eigenfunctions that are functions of position, we want to start simplifying this a little bit. So we can plug in our Hamiltonian and again remember that we're going to need to actually make some operators appear. So this is then, and remember that these phi's represent the special functions which are the energy eigenfunctions rather than just any wave function whatsoever. Okay, so now all we've done is expanded what our Hamiltonian is, and we're still keeping it fairly general. A specific quantum system would have a specific potential energy function of of space, and we don't have that yet. So next, what do we need? Well, we know that our momentum operator is negative i h bar d dx. So what do we do then? We plug that in. Now what does it mean for that to be squared? So I'm going to pull out my 1 over 2m, and now I'm going to take my operator and literally square it. Okay. And then I still have that potential energy term. And that then is applied to whatever these special wave functions are, which are my energy eigenstates. OK. And the reason it gets this fancy subscript is that each energy, so there's possible like discrete different energy possibilities, that each one is going to correspond to, in fact, a different energy eigenstate, the way that every eigenvalue has its own eigenvector in the discrete form. Here now, it, each, it has its own eigenfunction. So when we square this, the first part is easy. Negative i h bar squared, well, negative times negative is plus 1. i squared is negative 1, so this is just negative h bar squared. What is d dx squared. Well, this is where it's helpful to think about it as an operator. So that is d dx, d dx applied to some function, that's going to give you just the second derivative. Right? The second derivative. So that's what's going to happen here. So what we're left with now, as I, I come down to this final line, we have 1 over 2m, and I'm in fact going to make that negative h bar squared, and then I have my second derivative with respect to position, plus whatever my potential energy term is, which will uh, vary with what my quantum system is, and then that is applied to these special energy eigenfunctions, which each correspond to some energy. So that's as far as we can make it right now without having a specific form of this. And the idea here is that if we start to look at this, we're in fact going to see that this is a differential equation. So one way that we could rearrange this if we wanted to is to really distribute this and have this operator applied to this function plus our spatial uh, representation of this potential energy term times our function that that equals some scalar constant energy times our function. And so this tells you that there's a relationship between our second derivative of our function and the function. This is really what makes it messy. And so we're going to start with really simple uh, potential terms so that we can really focus on these two pieces. Later when we're talking about, for instance, uh, hydrogen, we have the potential from the point charge of the nucleus of hydrogen, but it gets complicated because the whole thing has to be in spherical coordinates. So we're going to take some of the simplest potentials initially, which is basically zero everywhere, infinite everywhere else, to really understand these two terms. But what we've worked towards here is actually going to be a differential equation. From this differential equation, we would figure out what the forms uh, this function must have for this equation to be satisfied. So that's the idea. Again, right now, very, very general. Soon we're going to work with some very simple, specific situations where we can dig in a little more.